It's the summer of 1324, and the travel company of 60,000 people line up before the palace of the Malian Empire. Mansa Musa is about to head to Mecca for a pilgrimage. A pilgrimage that would destroy the economy of every empire around him at the time. And the worst hit was Egypt. It would take Egypt 12 whole years to recover from the eventual economic catastrophe. The most fascinating thing is Egypt was not destroyed by war or famine, but by gold. Yes, gold. But who is Mansa Musa? Why did he need 60,000 people as an entourage? And what exactly was this pilgrimage for? Wealthier than Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, and Elon Musk put together, arguably richer than biblical King Solomon, the emperor of the Malian Empire between 1312 and 1337. Mansa Musa is historically the richest man that has ever lived. Deep in the medieval era, where a country's dominance is measured in its military strength and how much wealth they had, and wealth in gold and precious minerals. One of the significant economic activities during this time was the Trans-Saharan trade connecting North Africa with Sub-Saharan West Africa. This trade route facilitated the exchange of goods such as salt, ivory, slaves, and of course, gold. At the time, Egypt was the leading gold economy in Africa, arguably in the world. And guess what empire was in second place? The Malian Empire, of course. The Malian Empire was one of the richest and largest empire on earth, covering almost all of West Africa. Mansa Musa's first name was Kanku Musa, and he only earned the title of Mansa, meaning Sultan or Emperor in the Mandrika language. When his brother, the former king, left him in charge to go and explore the Atlantic Ocean, and he never returned. But he didn't just vanish. According to a number of sources, Abu Bakr II, Mansa Musa's brother, led Malian sailors to the Americas, specifically present-day Brazil. And the shocking part is they got there 200 years before Columbus. So did Columbus actually discover America? Abu Bakari was curious. He wanted to find out if the Atlantic Ocean, like the river Niger that swept through Mali, had another bank. This emperor gave up all his power and gold to pursue knowledge. How fascinating. But under Mansa Musa's reign, the empire expanded exponentially, establishing itself as a leading exporter of salt, copper, ivory, slaves, and gold. You know the saying that not all that glitters is gold? Well, not in the Malian Empire. This man had so much gold that when he decided to embark on a pilgrimage to Mecca in 1324, he took 100 camels, each carrying a load of 100 pounds of gold, 500 slaves, each carrying 4 pounds of gold, hundreds of well-trained warriors and thousands of men and women. In addition, they had enough food, water and animals to feed everyone on this 4,000 mile voyage. And this 4,000 mile voyage that would last for over 18 months. The caravan was so long that they arrived in the further town of Timbuktu while he was still in his palace. The total number is estimated to be around 60,000 people. It is popularly believed that Mansa Musa was a devout Muslim. And this was just a regular Hajj visit to the Holy Mosque. But certain events that would happen afterwards make this really, really hard to believe. According to Mahmud Kati, something significant happened in Mansa Musa's life that made him a deeply devoted and God-fearing person. Mansa Musa had accidentally killed his mother, Nana Kanku, and felt so much guilt and regret for his actions. He sought counsel and was told to visit the tomb of the Prophet Muhammad in Mecca to pray for forgiveness from Allah. With his 60,000 man entourage, the famous journey began that was going to change the landscape of the gold economy forever. The route was to take him from Niana through Walata, across the Nile, into Cairo, Egypt, through the Mamluk, and finally into the holy city of Mecca for the Hajj. Armed with enough gold, he and his band of travelers made their way, and everywhere they stopped, they could not stop giving gold. A pillar of Islam is Zakat, which is giving of arms to charitable causes. So Mansa Musa technically didn't plan to go back to Mali with all of his gold. Mansa Musa was determined to make things right with his God, a man desperately in search of peace. So much so that his journey is a significant bedrock of the spread of Islam in North Africa. So if they passed through a town and it was Friday, they would build a mosque there. And this journey went on for two years, so imagine that must have been a lot of mosques being built. However, the most significant part of this journey was when they got to Egypt after traveling for eight months. 
As you would already know, Egypt was a focal point in that era, not only for its pyramid, but because it was one of the largest gold markets in the world. They used gold in adorning buildings, adorning their pharaohs, and even jewelry, as certain historical records and even the Bible will attest to. So here was the king of the Malian Empire. After eight months of traveling with his caravan, in an empire that you could call their rival economically, they arrive in Egypt and get a befitting royal reception and a house in the palace of the pharaoh, King Mohammed al Nasser. And in the words of one historian, people who stopped whatever they were doing and stared in amazement of the incredibly spectacular leader of some unknown land who was riding slowly down their street. Even the Egyptian official responsible for meeting the incoming caravan exclaimed, In all my life, I have never seen anything like this. This caravan competes in glittering glory with the African sun itself. And Mansa Musa stayed here for three months. So much gold. So much that it began to have economic consequences. And he did something that drastically destroyed the Egyptian economy for another decade. See, Mansa Musa was giving out gold. So much gold. The price of gold drastically dropped and people became unnecessarily too rich. So people didn't want to work anymore. Now this I believe is why maybe the central bank doesn't print too much money. Because maybe if something is too much in circulation, it begins to lose his value. Some of these things are more valuable because they are hard to find, mine and even buy. But then the good side of this is as the economy of Egypt crashed, the economy of the Malian Empire continued booming. But the bad side is he gave out so much gold that he became bankrupt. Yes, the wealthiest man in the world ran out of money, or in this case, gold. So how was he going to continue his journey to Mecca? He couldn't return to Mali to get more gold, as it would take 8 months to go to and another 8 months to return to Egypt, making that a total of 16 months. And he couldn't travel to Mecca without any money. So Mansa Musa went to see a rich merchant in Alexandria, borrowing a whooping 50,000 dinars, which is about $160,000 today. This was 1324. Well, he did it with a promise to pay back with outrageous interest. With this, he was able to continue his pilgrimage to the Holy Land, continuing over a thousand miles until reaching Mecca, and getting to visit the tomb of Prophet Muhammad to make his intercession and ask for the forgiveness of Allah. His pilgrimage to Mecca, however, had lasting impact. For instance, some of the mosques that Mansa Musa built, such as the Mosque of Gao and Jingri Bear Mosque, still exist today. He ensured the spread of Islam and donated heavily to academic courses facilitating the construction of universities because he brought back with him so many architects and scholars to develop his empire. He didn't just put his empire on the map but himself. Literally, because Mansa Musa's story of his wealth and fame had traveled all over the world that he was depicted on the Catalan Atlas of 1375. And until today, there are still debate as to what the true intention of this sultan was. Was he a devout Muslim? A burdened man searching for inner peace? An emperor who wanted to put his name on the map by showboating his wealth? Or did he intentionally give out so much gold to crumble the economy of his rival empires? However you choose to see it, tales of Mansa Musa's good deeds traveled far and wild. And until today, something a lot of people agree is Mansa Musa had a good heart for the poor. And if you're wondering what became of Egypt, it took them 12 long years before the economy regained some stability. So what do you think? Do you think it was out of pure generosity or he had other motive to tip the odds in the favor of his empire let me know in the comment section and if you've watched this far please hit the like and subscribe button i can't wait to hit 10,000 subscribers